talking about him. Can Yu-Gi-Oh! 2 0 him here? Let's find out. Starting to the bottom right of the map, we currently see the Zerg player once again, starting of course for his team Slayers. The king of Code. This is Slayers Yu-Gi-Oh! Using his hair as the crown, I guess, right now. He's got that wave going on. Sick wave. Uh, Bogus is his opponent to the top left for the team STX Soul. You know, Bogus did a really good job at the qualifier. He was able to take down Tails with the 2-0, which was already quite impressive. But then he had to face two Zerg players. He had to face True and Golden. Golden playing for Quantic Gaming, also a very strong Zerg. And he defeated both of them. So right now he is playing basically another Zerg and uh, suddenly Yu-Gi-Oh! just looks a little bit too strong for Bogus. Bogus, uh, you know, he also beat Tails in his run through, which of course is a Protoss player, but uh, that's that's a pretty good accomplishment. Yeah. Did you mention that already? I'm sorry. <laughs> I yeah. thought you only mentioned the Zergs for some reason. I was thinking about... No, no, everything's fine. Okay. We'll I'm good. so sorry. I'm like, <laughs> I surrender. <laughs> I'm like Every I show my like fine. I show like my white like underneath wolf part like when they, like wolves surrender they show their their underbelly that's what I'm doing right now I'm like all right I give up like what Jar Jar Binks style man I don't know <laughs> I give up uh but <laughs> I hope you don't expect me to bite you or anything no no no, no. Okay. I I just I just I surrender okay that's good. white. Wolves don't have flags, man, but the underneath of most animals is actually white color, and that is a way that a wolf can surrender, is to show the white. I know, but usually the dominant male then starts to uh, um, at least put the teeth on their throat, and I'm not going to do that to you, okay? No, no, I know you're not going to bite my teeth, but usually when the wolf surrenders, you don't have to you don't have to finish him. It's not Mortal Kombat, it's like, all right. No, 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 it's not finishing, but it's just like uh, taking it a step further. Yeah, well, I don't... I don't expect that. I think we're okay. I think we're good friends here, and yeah. and I just made a mistake. I miss. <laughs> I didn't know that you mentioned tails. I thought that you only mentioned the Zergs. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'll say it one more time. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> By the way, that six lings coming out for Yu-Gi-Oh yeah. here with his pool first, so he's going to be able to put some pressure on that command center. And you know, I like this move quite a lot. He's just trying to be a little bit more aggressive here and uh, trying to take a bit of a gamble. If, for example, Bogo starts with the CC first once again, then he will find himself in a very weird position. That's not the case this time, but it puts still a little bit of pressure onto the Terran player. And he's not controlling his lings though, you know, I feel like in this case you just want to let the SCV see it, he's going to see it anyways, you just send your lings, now he lost so much time there. Yeah, but it's mainly about the pressure that you want to execute, you know he can't do a lot with those zerklings anyways, the uh, main thing that he could try to accomplish is take down the SCV that builds the command center, but in the end he won't be able to force a cancel on the CC or whatsoever, you can really see that he's just buying his, uh, well, buying his time, making sure that he has lings on the map. It also of course secures him against uh, opening with uh, some kind of double barracks play yeah and oh wow and look at that he's actually going straight yeah. for the roach one he he's, wants to be aggressive he really does you know uh, what works in game one may work in game two just aggressive style obviously this is gonna be a very different aggressive style but Yugo sees that there are already three Marines out. He doesn't even want to waste those lanes. He's going to use them later with the rest of his Roaches in an attack. You know, the thing is, Yu-Gi-Oh! is the kind of player that you want to face in the third round of Code A, but not in the first. Yeah, definitely. He just will not drop out of this league. He will never, ever again, probably, be able to advance to Code S either. So if you face him in the, uh, in the third round, you have a pretty good chance that you're going to win the game because he probably likes Code A. I yeah. don't think he even wants to go to go that scene. It's It starts to seem that way, <laughs> you know. Uh, his Overlord's finished, he starts six roaches. He's going to be doing this with slowlings, using all of his gas for the roaches. This is a pretty common style. It's a very deadly style, if not prepared for appropriately. This is this is something that Bogus can hold, though. He is getting his bunker up. Will he micro well? It all comes down to micro. I mean, he's not Maru Prime, but he may be able to hold. No matter what, you're going to take some losses, though, but as a turn with this build. Wolf, the problem is he doesn't have any scouting whatsoever. He's pretty he's pretty slow with uh, what he currently has. I don't think that Bogus will be able to defend this probably. Yes, he will probably not die to this, but he will lose yeah, a lot. Yeah, he's going to lose a lot. No Marauders, sure. only four Marines. The bunker is cute, but at the same time, he just does not have any information about this. Both the Lago Watchtowers were controlled, and if he loses the Hellions now, right, it's dead. Yeah, the first one already dead, and now suddenly he's looking at the Roach, and he's like, Oh my god, I have to defend, but how? He's gonna, it's just nothing. He's gonna try to make Banshees, but it's gonna take way too long. He's not, he doesn't have the ability to make Marauders. 
The Roaches here are kind of trapped on the ramp though, and he's not able to attack the SCVs. No, now he breaks fine. through. He gets through it, now he can just take down SCVs. He won't die. Bogus won't die to yeah. this, most likely. He will be able to somehow hold, but the problem is he will lose too much in the process. Yeah, he's gonna lose so much here. He's actually on the high ground now, chasing these helmets. He's gotta stay away from that bunker though, he wants to maximize the damage. Now he gets into the main. This is the problem moment. This is when the SCVs have to fight Roaches, and that's never going to be a good trade. Even with one of the weakened Roaches, he kills so many SCVs. As long as he uh, hits those SCVs with three Roaches, he can one-shot them, and now suddenly we have 26 Harvesters against 20. And there's one more Roach at the natural, killing more SCVs right now he has not dealt with. Yeah, he doesn't really see it, does he? Another one is already dead, and Yu-Gi-Oh! is playing really well here. He killed so many uh, uh, Hellions, SCVs, Marines. Oh, uh, he needs to target that last Hellion if he wants it. He's not gonna get it. How many harvests did he kill in total? 18. Wow. That Great puts stuff. the worker count at, actually at this point, 30 to 24. Not a huge deficit, but of course you get to sacrifice the economy to do this attack, so that's what makes it a pretty even trade. Bogus ahead in supply. And he's got these these scary banshees, but the sport crawlers are already on the way. This is another great thing that this attack gives you is excellent scouting information of what sort of tech your opponent may be going for, so he has time to prepare with those spores. And the cool thing is also that Yu-Gi-Oh! used the time that he just bought himself to just spread his creep, so even with the banshee out, the creep spread cannot be controlled. There are no active creep tumors that can be shot at this time. At the same uh, moment, we have three queens. We have another one being built. We have spore crawlers. Yu-Gi-Oh! just playing this very, very safe and has a great economy. The lair tech is going up. So this was a pretty cool start for him into this match. Resources lost are roughly the same, but anyways, with all the harvesters killed, that was so worth it. Yeah. Now, Vicky the Viking is coming out of the starport, and she is going to go and clean up all of the overlords on the map, make sure that drop play can be that much more effective yeah. later on. Let's see what he did there. Yeah. <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> Two drones killed already when you've got two Banshees you can one-shot a worker as long as there's no Carapace upgrades. And this actually starts to even out the work counter again. And of course with the additional mules, this will really be in favor of Bogus. So wow, really nice though, control man on those yeah. Banshees. You can see his Wraith Micro showing through there a little bit. Even though Yu-Gi-Oh had a good start, he needs to be careful here. We've seen uh, other games where Yu-Gi-Oh was ahead in economy early on, but then lost the game in the end because he was just not able to execute his control in the macro in the mid-game correctly. But right now, he's still in a decent position. He needs to drone up a little bit. He's getting plus two, plus two. We have scans and the creep tumors, a few of them are already being killed. Is he really trying to get this hatch? No, he's nah, trying he to save the drone. can't do it, drone. yeah. That would be a bit too risky. But he That's, saves the drone. Yeah, he saves the drone and he's still got so many tumors actually on the map right now. He's got, even after the, the scan, he's got several active ones. So he can keep spreading that creep. He lost his, his north uh, northeast creep, but the rest of his creep is still pretty, pretty kicking over there. He's got the creep now all the way extended to the hatchery. He does start after he's warded off the Hellions. His lair tech is done and he has an overseer morphing, so we'll get some scouting information fairly soon and we have him also with the plus one plus one now halfway done. The thing for Yu-Gi-Oh! is that securing this third base shouldn't be a problem with the amount of queens that he currently has on the map. So he can definitely deal with the banshees as soon as they swoop in, but this is definitely heading more into a macro game than we've seen on the first map. Yeah. Uh, right now, Bogus is he's powering up all of his production facilities. He's got the third base making into an orbital. He's got the upgrades on the way just slightly behind Yu-Gi-Oh's, but uh, this game is, is really even right now. Uh, and once Yu-Gi-Oh sees a third command center is up though, he's going to have to deal with that in some way. He's going to either have to take a fourth and continue his tech, or he's going to have to put some pressure on because he can't just allow Bogus to have that third base up. Bogus actually is starting to pull ahead in this game. He's doing yeah. a really good job after losing so many harvesters in the early game, and currently he's looking at nearly 100 supply. Yu-Gi-Oh needs more harvesters. The third base needs to be saturated if he really wants to get a hold on things. The big problem for him is that we have Siege Mode nearly done for Bogus. He also has the 1-1 for the Marines. Combat Shield is coming up. The third base is something that Yu-Gi-Oh! just can't simply attack. And with the first Medivacs on the map, Bogus can now just move out, can take down Creep Tumors, can put on more and more pressure onto Yu-Gi-Oh! The Slayer's Zerg is definitely in a little bit of trouble. He 
needs to be very, very careful because Bogus is trying to get a shot at the yeah. economy. The Baneliness just barely finishing in time for him to try to morph these Banelings, but they're not going to be done in time to save this hatchery, I'm afraid. There's just too much DPS here on these Marines. He's got a... He may have to go, Yeah, where are they? There they are. A little bit too late. Yeah, though. that was... That attack could have been a lot more scary. Yeah, if you combine the Hellion Pressure with the Marines at the same time, then this could have been so much more dangerous to Yu-Gi-Oh! But the timing for Bogus was a bit off. Therefore, the Hellions arriving when most of the Marines were already gone. And Yu-Gi-Oh! is now looking at still the Harvest account that is a bit behind of his opponent. Or did he take the lead by now? No, he didn't. Yeah, with the Harvesters producing, he will take a slightly lead. It's going to be 61 versus 55. Um, but with triple SCD production, he's in a decent spot. Again, the upgrade's now even, but the upgrade production is slightly ahead for Yu-Gi-Oh! with his 2-2. The economy is just not good enough for Yu-Gi-Oh! At this point in time, you want to be way ahead of the Terran player when it comes to the Harvest account, because those mules are really starting to work in favor of the Terran when it comes down to the mineral mining. And uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! being on three base against three base, not having a fourth and also a very low account of uh, drones, cannot really make any of these attacks work. He's taking to uh, to the highest take right now. We have him with plus two, plus two, pathogen glands, baning speed. But the problem is, any kind of higher tech and army composition is going to be a little bit too expensive for him. He's not even getting a spire, so it looks more and more like he wants to add an ultralist cavern later on. And I don't think that this is the right the, the right choice against Bogus play. Yeah, I I, I mean it it could work out, but ultralist on this map. It just depends on how you engage it. The problem always becomes with the fourth base where you run up the ramp with a few Marines and run back down and force them to have a bad engagement. Oh! <laughs> oh, that was a close call there. The Baneling detonates. Too much excitement for the Baneling. I like the creep spread for Yu-Gi-Oh! That's something that he really does well, but he really needs another base. He can't play three base against three base for the entire course of the time. And what you never want as a Zerg player is having your opponent uh, so far ahead in supply. That's oh. already a very, very bad sign. Here comes the Spire, but oh, this, he builds the Spire after the, the high The timing a little done. bit weird here, yeah. I'm actually sure. wondering if he thought he already started it and now just realized that the Spire is not there because he wanted to upgrade it into a greater Spire. That seems like a very strong possibility. I don't know, like, which actually is weaker, a changeling or, like, a, a doodad robot. I actually think that this is really the case. I think he uh, thought that he already started the Spire. And uh, they tried to upgrade it to a greater Spire, then realized he doesn't have one and started to build it. That's why his build is a little bit off here. And now uh, Bogus is starting to apply pressure, and all this time that Yu-Gi-Oh! really needed to make this work is suddenly gone. The fourth oh, wow. base is not gonna work. Yeah, he's got no queen nearby. The Banshee is with eight hit points left, but it doesn't matter. A drop in the main base is doing damage. He's actually not in the main, sorry, at the third. But he's losing queen number one. The second one might die as well. The Zerglings are coming in, but he's already getting out of there. No Bogus. cancel on the hatchery, Ouch. and the Banshee actually gets killed, but just half a second too late. Bogus Bogus is playing a great game here right now. He really has the better position in this match. Bogus is at 190 against 144 supply. Yu-Gi-Oh! is trying to make this work with the Greater Spire. Won't be there in time. Yeah, this is a really tough position. Bogus just has to clean up this Ling Force or just let his bunker and siege tanks deal with the back home while he moves forward. I don't think this is the right angle of attack though. I would rather see him attack uh, near that likely fourth base. Even with bungles, there's so many medevacs here you just can't kill the Marines. He's so vulnerable, Yu-Gi-Oh, that is. He's trying to move in, and even now that the Siege takes are on, Siege is trying to make it work again, forces the Terran player to use Siege mode once more. But the Marines, they dart in and take down another Queen, another Scan, and here come the Zerglings, but still Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't really want to engage. He's just trying to buy time. Yeah, he's a little bit nervous about fighting here. I would be. I would be too. The big problem is that Bogus adds two additional starports, so now he can really produce Vikings in order to counter the brood lords, and we don't even have brood lords just yet. Look at how like ineffective the fungals are because he can only get two, but the medevacs just heal too quickly. He needs more. He's gonna try to go for flank, maybe. It's just there's too much siege tank fire there. You cannot commit to an attack. Yugi is trying to get a fourth base, and he desperately needs it. But Bogus is already building his fourth command center, and he has the bank. That's the big difference here. Yugi just doesn't have the resources to really build his army once that. He loses these investors and Zerglings, and slowly and steadily Bogus is pushing his way forward onto the creep of his opponent, is taking down the tumors, forcing the creep back and getting into a better position by the second. 
There is going to be a moment where Bogus does not have Vikings because he's maxed out, he can't make any. And there are going to be five rulers, but as soon as he loses any of his units, he will start Viking production. And this is a good bungle here. He needs to connect with the Banelings, and a few Marines do go down, but the medevac healing is just so much. Finally, the rulers are now shown. He doesn't start Vikings yet, in fact. Ah, uh, here comes Yu-Gi-Oh! Finally, he's better into attacking, but the Brutals, they are exposed, and two of them are already dead. The Fungals are good this time, and the Baneling Connect is really amazing, but the problem is it's too little, too late. And the late. bank is just so good for Bogus, he can immediately yeah. reproduce two siege tanks, 12 Marines, two more medevacs. Plus three, plus three, nearly done. There's two reactors on the production tab, and I'm guaranteed I know those are for the Viking production. As soon as that's done, he's going to start like six Vikings at once if he wants to. Plus one for error is on the way. He's even adding two Thors. And with the Thors, he will definitely be able to put a bit of pressure onto those uh, Brute Lords. And as soon as the Vikings join, then uh, there's just nothing that Yu-Gi-Oh can do anymore. He's still 50 supply behind his opponent, and fourth base for Bogus is already secured. This is a really tough situation for the Zerg player to be in. A good start in the game with the Roach attack that we've seen. A lot of harvesters killed and also um, minerals uh, wasted with all those Hellions that Bogus lost. But Yu-Gi-Oh in the end is falling behind, and he's falling behind fast. He really is. Four Viking is about to pop out here. His Broodlords are his only trump card right now. He's going to continue to produce them. This drop that was hanging out on the left side for so long is now going to become effective again. So many workers lost already. It will have to lift, but he only loses one Marine versus, I think, probably about six drones at least went down there. Some more Bungles here. He's trying to pick off those medevacs. And I like how aggressive he's being now with his investors finally. These Bungles were actually great. If oh, if he gets another one. Oh, oh wow. wow. That hit like every <laughs> single unit. If he gets one more, he might kill all the medevacs. And I mean all of them. And they are down. The medevacs are on. This was the best Bungle ever. This was such a great funnel, he killed everything with it, and now he's putting a lot of pressure onto the medivacs and the siege tanks too. Is Yu-Gi-Oh able to get back into this game? That would actually be so surprising, he has a full face right now. But Bogus really made a bit of a mistake when he just clumped up everything, but this drop once more to the bottom left is doing a lot of damage, really well done by Bogus. The worker count is starting to plummet a little bit with all these drops. It's down to 56 at this point versus 77. STVs with all the orbitals he has, even lands a fifth command center, makes it into a planetary right away. He just got so much production that even if Yu-Gi-Oh kills Bogus' army five times, he just has the money to make it again. He needs to kill this dropship, it's becoming a really big pain in his neck right now. Yeah, it's definitely true. Currently we're looking at an army supply of 123 for Bogus and 100 for Yu-Gi-Oh! The fungus, look at the amount of infestors that we have. This is a problem that also Protoss players have been struggling with. Mass infestor is just so strong. It comes to a point where it's actually ridiculous and looking quite silly that a support unit mass is being supported by just a few, I would say, damage units, and yeah. that's all that you need. And the thing is, the infestor can spawn units like that, like the infested terror. Yeah, that's why I really would like Bogus to add some ghosts in uh, the situation. This is something that we've seen by Gumiho, and he was doing really well with this. And he's starting to split his marines a little bit better here, and now the Broodlords are struggling to escape. He's got to use good fungals once more. Now his fourth base is exposed, though he's got some failings, but they're out of position. A lot of scans also being used by Bogus, always trying to get into position where he knows exactly where his opponent is positioned. But now the fungals, where are the rest of the fungals? Now finally here they are! And the Bailey starting to, de uh, to detonate, but he needs more to save his four. Yeah, he needs more uh, of those actual Bailey's to roll in there and finish the job, but he just doesn't have them, and now he's, he's pretty much dead. To be honest with you, I don't really know why he didn't fungal more. He had so many yeah. investors, and they were, all, they were still on nearly max energy. He's hesitating so much to fungal. Uh, there's not even that many siege tanks. There's only two right now. He yeah. could he could have spread his infests and go in there for some more fungals. Like right now, okay, now he's coming a little bit more here. But he's he got to. He could have killed all the marines in this position. He already had the first fungal in there, and then with the rest of the investors, it would have been easy for him to just kill them. He has so much energy on these guys. Oh, those failing hits are good. Uh, but he just he's still so low on supply. He needs to uh, this is a little bit better though. Great fungal here once again. He needs the chain fungal. He really needs it. And he's moving in, but now the investor count is starting to drop. The siege tanks are there to do their damage. The medivacs are going to die with another fungal, and here they are, one after another. They just break down, are destroyed, but still the supply lead for Bogus. It's 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 just a matter of economy at this point. Bogus has a ton of income. Yu-Gi-Oh basically has one mining base yep. left at this point. Whereas Bogus is on three. Hey, right. He's got all these energy units, the investors he can keep alive, 
and spawn free units with. It's not going to be enough if Bogus just keeps wearing him down, which so far he's been able to do successfully. It's actually quite impressive that Yugi has been able to hold on this long from the supply deficit he had after losing a few of those battles early on, just using his Infestors. And I feel like he's not even using them perfectly, but he's able to hold on so well just using those Infestors. Look at the production tab. There's nothing being made for Yu-Gi-Oh right now. He's going to take out... Uh, will he actually... I, no, he no. can't quite do it. I don't think that he will be able to take down the planetary here. He should actually stop attacking it and just, just try to take down as many SCVs as possible. He lost all of his lings here, and now Bogus' army is maxed out again. It may be unstoppable. These Infestors lost a lot of energy during that attack. Yu-Gi-Oh is fighting a losing battle. Without a fourth phase, he just can't sustain this army size and he cannot rebuild this, uh, these Infestors. It's definitely a tricky and a slippery slope that he's walking right now. At this point, what can he do? Bogus has five bases against the three of those three bases. Only one is still mining for Yu-Gi-Oh, whereas Bogus still has mineral patches on three of his. So it's just gonna be... I don't know, he just... He, he can't win this. He just can't. It's it's a battle of economy at the end of the yeah. day. If he doesn't take a fall, though, he's not a, at least able to kill a few bases of Bogus. He won't be able to succeed. In the long run, he will lose even this if he is, trades cost efficiently. Yeah, this is his last chance. And, I mean, uh, I just don't see any hope here. He's got a... There's just way too many army. Even if he hits the perfect combos in four different places, he won't be able to kill everything. These funnels are great. They are good, but uh, it's just not enough. Bogus can rebuild his army as an 80 supply lead, and he has still 3,400 minerals. And now he's losing two more Broodlords. The Infestors are out of energy, and I think Yu-Gi-Oh! is out of luck. He's going to have to play a game number three. Yeah, I think so too. If not for a huge mistake by Bogus, but even with an able, he could take this game now. He just has way too much, and the economy for him is still going strong. He's at 180 supply against 95. And uh, the bases, they are completely exposed. The Infestors are also running out of energy, so there's not a lot that Yu-Gi-Oh! can do at the moment. 15 Marines, 2 tanks, GG! Just making so many units at a time. As soon as a unit is lost, it is replaced. Bogus looking much more solid in, the, in game number 2 than in game number 1. He took a lot of risks, arguably both games, but Yu-Gi-Oh! with the same aggressive style. What's going to happen in game number three? Will he actually just try to play straight up? He looked really good in the late game, actually, in game number two. He was playing from a deficit, but he kept hanging on. This is definitely something that is uh, very... Uh, I don't know. It, the, it pressures Yu-Gi-Oh! a lot. The problem for him is one thing that Sela always talks to us about is that Yu-Gi-Oh! is getting quite nervous in uh, games like these. And uh, the problem for him is after looking at a 1-0 lead and after a really good start into the series, he's now suddenly facing his opponent in the third game. And if he just screws up a little bit, Bogus will get ahead and will be able to advance in the second round. And the king of Code A will find himself in Kobe. So that's a lot of pleasure right now for Yu-Gi-Oh! Of course, also for Bogus as well. After playing a great Code A qualifier, he wants to secure himself this win in the first round of Code A in the round of 48 and advance to the next round to have at least this Code A spot secured for the next season. The match is loaded. It is going to be on Abyssal City, our new underwater map. Yu-Gi-Oh! of course against Bogus. Zerg versus Terran. Only one player will stay in Code A. It all comes down to game number three. The map is loaded.